Buddies, <laughs> welcome to Thick Skin with Jeff Ross. Life is hard. We're getting through it together. So happy to have my good friend Annie in the bunker today. Hi, Annie. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Ed. My buddy Kevin's here too. What's going on, bud? How you doing, Jeff? Doing great. Good, buddy. Um, it was therapeutic this week to finally give. Our pal Brody Stevens, his big memorial send off last night. And Annie Letterman was there, so I asked her to come down to the bunker today and maybe share some catharsis with us. Mm -hmm. You knew Brody well, and I loved him. I loved him. And at the end of the show, I thought we would do a second, unprecedented second roast in peace tribute to Brody. Mm -hmm. uh, for my part, I'm going to play the audio clip of the tribute that I gave for him last night in front of his mom and sister and yeah. all the hangover actors, Bradley Cooper and Ed Helms and Ken Jeong and the director Todd Phillips was there and Jimmy Kimmel was there and and all the comics were there. Um, it was very, very moving. It was really good. Yeah, so it was a tough week, but I left I left there really feeling happy. Yeah. Um, for some reason, these memorials, as sad as they were, I cried and I got a lot out of my system, but I yeah. felt happy. There was a lot of free weed, too. That could have been it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of free weed. It was sponsored. <laughs> of course, Brody had a sponsored fucking funeral. <laughs> sponsored by Speedweed. Enjoy it. They sponsor a lot of comedy shows. Most of the deaths, they're really there for, you know. <laughs> you know, whatever gets you through the night, whatever gets you through the memorial. And... And um, I guess I've left there. I mean, I cried through the whole thing. Zach Galifianakis oh did an God. incredibly powerful speech I that had me just weep. You did. Yeah. I was just weeping. Do you remember what he said? I have it written down. Yeah. You can Anything, read it if you want. You don't have to read it. I mean, it was fucking beautiful. Yeah, he was talking about like the sunset of this past couple of weeks and how it's like been really hard. And beautiful, and it's like hard to look away from, you know. Yeah, they were really good friends. Zach Galifianakis produced Brody's Enjoy This TV show, mm. and they were good pals for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were in the Hangover movies together. Brody played the cop, right? <laughs> in the first one, and the second one, he played like the gangster's buddy. So you played. Two different roles in the same franchise. It's just whatever he could <laughs> use that goatee for, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> that sweet goatee. How well did you know Brody? I knew Brody pretty well. I saw him um, multiple times a week. Um, I talked to him Wednesday night. The last night we all saw him. Um, I said, do I it. I said, whatever you're feeling, go for it. <laughs> 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 really follow any urge you have, Brody, okay? <laughs> Any impulse, this is your time. <laughs> our, our pal Brody committed suicide just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I think I saw his last set at the comedy store the for just room? a minute or two in the main room. I stuck yeah. my head in after my set in the original room. and He was doing his thing, man. He was always crushing it. Um, and it was interesting to see his childhood friends there. Like you think, Oh, maybe comedy was all he has had and that's why he killed himself. I mean, but it wasn't, he had this amazing foundation of friendship mm -hmm. guys. He grew up with his, his, uh, little league baseball coach was, was there. Great. He was so funny. He was amazing. He did so well. And through his friends, you learned a lot of the origins of Brody's catchphrases and stuff. Yeah. And, it was really beautiful. There's a lot to be said about the communal mourning, the idea of mourning with the people that knew him. Yeah. You meet people. I never met his mom before. 
I said, well, you know, I was talking about what a wonderful guy he was. And she said, yes, that Brody was quite a guy, quite a guy. Yeah. Unfortunately, the funeral was so long that she did pass in the middle of it. So <laughs> nobody the noticed. Ma- the <laughs> memorial was kind of like a Brody set where <laughs> it just went on and on and on and on and on. Uh, and, and and at the end, uh, Don Barris, who was very tight with Brody, they did a tribute in their way where Brody used to play drums and Don would would sing along to songs and they'd bring up other comics like Tony Hinchcliffe to play gu- air guitar yeah. and Earl Skakel would play drums on a chair in Brody's honor and yeah. everybody sort of lit their lighters up and rocked out in the so main pretty. room. and Lo Esther was dancing around. It was really, it was awesome. Steve Renazizi was also playing the drums. Steve Renazizi hosted and Dave Rath and um, Adam... EGAT from the Comedy Store put it all together and it was really moving to see all the Comedy Central executives there and the Hangover cast there. Um, Brody really touched a lot of people and um, I guess we could talk more about that at the end of the podcast because I want to play my my tribute but there's been a lot of this going on in comedy lately. William Stevenson passed away and our friend Ed's really close pal, Kevin Barnett, and we did a couple, you did a couple memorials, you hosted one, Ed. Hosted two memorials for the same person. So it felt like a third memorial? <laughs> yeah. It's real. <laughs> Jesus, Ed again? All right. <laughs> it, it just, how do we deal with loss? I mean, and you, as comedians, we, we joke about it. Laugh. I think about it, because Brody, was it you that was saying it, like Brody like gave us like the... I think it was you. Yeah, he told us how to deal with his he death. Gave us, yeah, he told us how to deal with it. Yeah, push I've and believe. I've been telling a lot of people that. You know, yeah. just like, you know, positive the, push, like positive get through energy. it, do that the positive was, thing. That was his catchphrase, push and, and bunch, believe. Yeah, like a bunch of us um, that were close with him, a lot of my friends more so than me for more years, we all have been like exercising every day. Like everything, we're just like writing, just always like choosing the positive path because of him. Hmm. It's definitely like... The worst way possible, but everyone gets closer when these kind of things happen. It's really true. You know, it's... Because I saw friends last night I would never normally really connect with, and you have a hug, and you laugh and bond over Brody, and it's kind of amazing, actually. That's how I felt with the Comedy Central execs. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I didn't think we'd run into each other again. (laughs) Just kidding. When it came to Kevin, I mean, I'm friends with all of his friends from high school and college now. They text me all the time to check in on me. You know, they send me, you know, like just random posts. And one of them went and put a giant bird luger flag on top of a mountain in Mexico. Oh, wow. Just so he would have like a, he would reclaim Mexico. And so it's uh, just like, yeah, so I, like, I got like 20 new friends. It's actually kind of a pain in the ass. How, do, how was Kevin's last picture, him and that poncho, like literally the ultimate last picture of all time? It really is. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. He that went. was what hit me hard when uh, it was like two days afterwards. And like they, uh, someone showed me the, they had, I was over at Josh Rabinowitz's house and he had the poncho. Oh my mm. God. Yeah. That was like, that was the. That was the hard. That was just like, oh, fuck. He put it on. You couldn't find him. You're like, Josh, where'd you go? (laughs) He's very short. (laughs) Yeah, they were a fun group. I was a guest star on Friends of the People, the show that Josh Rabinowitz had with Kevin Barnett and Lil Rel Howery and the Lucas Brothers and... Jermaine and... And Jermaine Jermaine Fowler. Yeah, man. These guys died young. Kevin Barnett, 32 years old, died in Tijuana, Mexico. Let's just say... My theory is he had a smile on his face <laughs> when he went down. He was down there on a break having some fun. Yeah. Had he a lady was, with him. Mm-hmm. He was doing all right. You know, and then there's Brody, who I'm having a hard time coming to terms yeah. with because Brody, even though he talked about how sad he was and depression and his act was all about that in a lot of ways, um, you know, this guy hung himself. And it's not something, nobody used those words last night at the memorial, but we can't dance around the fact that this is what happened. And when I try to look at those images into my head when I close my eyes, I sort of can't, even though we all know Brody had his problems, his his mental issues, um, I never imagined that that's what would happen. I yeah. always thought he would, it was like Richard Lewis, I said the other day, like, 
you know, Richard Lewis, when I was starting out, he always, you know, the, the Prince of Pain, he, he used his mishigas, his darkness, his angst, his anxiety, and made it into art that made other people happy. And Brody did that. Brody did that, too. Yeah, but then, um, was it Mike Gibbons? Yeah. He's made a good, a funny joke that I was saying, too, because I had said it the, on the one on Tuesday that we had for the public. Um, I came up behind Sandy when they were playing some of Brody's stuff, and yeah. I just, like, I, like, whispered in his ear. I was like, this, you just, like, look at him, like, this is the craziest person we've ever met. Like, yeah. He was just so wild. He was so nuts. He was yeah. so funny. He was just like, you know, I mean, maybe he was smiling when he hung himself. I don't fucking know. Brody always had that like. Yeah. You know, it was funny. Like they had these giant pictures of Brody all over the so main room at the comedy store last night. And it turns out they didn't make those for the memorial. They found those in Brody's apartment. <laughs> yeah. I can't imagine that they're that big, though. How big was his apartment? Brody was his biggest, his own biggest fan. I know. You know, all that positive. Somebody made the point last night. He was doing all that positive push, not just to help his friends and his fans, but to help himself. Yeah, he was trying yeah. to push through. He was really, he really was. Did and you see his last Periscope? I didn't watch. That's it. The worst I didn't. Thing. I didn't have the the, the guts I didn't watch to watch it either. It. I couldn't bring myself to do it. He was really trying to be better. It was the meds for sure. Like he was really trying to get better, and that really like I talked to him Wednesday night. We were talking about his meds. It's just like there's so many things that I've had to like grapple with because it's like obviously like you you can't be responsible for another person's actions or anything like that and. It's like almost narcissistic to think like you would be the one that would save him or whatever, but it's like selfishly. When I was talking to him, he ended up like I kind of like lost him in the crowd, but I was talking to him and I wanted to go out to eat after the my spot. And he, I guess, went down and was doing Tripoli's podcast or something. And I just lost him in the crowd. And I remember I was asking like Sandy if you wanted to eat. And I ended up eating fucking alone. Mm. And I'm not saying I could have like saved him, but I could have had like another hang with Brody. We could have gone to New Orleans or something. Yeah. Yeah. I could have had another <sighs> like hour with him or something i felt like it just feels like such a personal failure when your friends kill themselves it just feels like I it's understand. not our fault but it's like i've never had this before it's personally. so sad i've never known anyone to do it yeah no. i've had it a few times and it just it's not you know it when just, did you decide it so was your fault <laughs> like three uh, or four <laughs> I, you know honestly probably within 5 minutes they they you know that you get to that yeah. Very, you start rationalizing yeah. and start reasoning, and then you get to that point where you're like, "This is I. What did I? What could I have done right. yeah. better?" And even if you were the best friend, you know, or or somebody who like with Brody, you know, personally, I absolutely love Brody. I just wasn't yeah. close with him, but yeah. I just always saw him everywhere, right. and just you know, he was just such a great guy. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm grappling with. Yeah. And it actually it hit me all today, to be honest. Um, yeah. That. Well, Kevin, just to, you know, Kevin is a comedy writer who's a writer on The Burn, my Comedy Central show with, with, that Ed and I, I were on. Tell people what that show is. It's been a while. And, 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 and Brody, Brody did the warm-up. Brody did the warm-up. was our yeah. warm-up comedian. He was... All the writers would come out and watch him when you should be working. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. Was that you said that? Or was that... Were they talking about that for... I, I I think it came up a few times. That's I mean it's <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. He yeah, Mike like, Gibbons, yes. who produced the burn, was talking about how writers will will often. The, the, he, he saw Brody warm up for a pilot recently, and the pilot couldn't follow Brody. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> pretty amazing. So yeah, there's something about the like day after the final memorial where it's mm. like oh a little bit like what Zach was saying where it's like you don't want to like look away from the sunset you right. don't want like let it go I kept losing it yesterday thinking about them taking the marquee down because uh, the marquee yeah, said yeah. Um, we enjoy Brody, it yeah Brody's catchphrase was enjoy it and said we enjoy I mean I like usually can't get through that but like it was a beautiful tribute and the I comedy think. store really was generous to let everybody take over and Brody loves Starbucks, so we all had Starbucks during the break. <laughs> I, know, I and, feel guilty that I have coffee and, and, beans. <laughs> and, Whopper, and, and Whoppers, I guess he liked Whoppers, and we ate Whoppers together, and I just felt like I'd 
won a national championship and was at the White House. It was yeah, delicious. It did feel, yeah, it did feel fun to be able to eat that. The shit. fast food angle. And it felt really good to eat that. In Brody's honor, I've decided to uh, take over all his gigs. March 29th and 30th, I'll be at the Brea Improv. <laughs> Enjoy it. May 10th and 11th, I'll be at the La Jolla Comedy Store. I don't know why I did that. But I liked it. I jumped in and saw Have him. Have you right seen here. him? Um, do you keep like thinking you see him? I keep thinking I keep that going he's like, in the hallway. And then it's the worst part. It's always like someone turns on. I'm like, oh, God, it's you. <laughs> you know what it is for me is, especially that first few days, I just kept wanting to call him yeah. to go, people are saying you're dead. What's this, is this true? Like almost like in disbelief that like if I ever heard a rumor about Brody, I would just call him. And Brody and I did the oddball tours together. We shared a dressing room, and and and. Did you see his dick? I've been curious. I have not seen his dick, okay. but but hearing a few stories lately <laughs> about 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 different women that he that that he was he would get embarrassed if you talked about his personal life, and he always made a joke that he was ten percent gay. Yeah. And there is video evidence of him kissing Sarah Tiana, who was here last week. <gasps> Talking about Brody, That's she loved him. She was crying last yeah. night, yeah. right while I was speaking, and right during a, your punchlines. She's like a Sarah, real wrap it up. <laughs> she's a real sweetheart, yeah, and Sarah. and um, yeah. At the end of the show, I'll play that. I'll play that uh, that tribute. I cried so hard in the beginning, like during Zach's thing, and then his best friend went up after, or his dad, Fretton's dad, and then he went up. I was crying so hard, and I assumed everyone else had like let loose. People were holding it together so much that I looked like I was fucking Brody. Like I was like, I think I might have gotten rid of the gay rumors. Like I looked like I was his secret mistress. I was like, we. I was like, all right, I gotta pull it together. Yeah. Secretly <laughs> straight. I'm like no one's like crying. Yeah. Whitney but, Cummings was there. She had to. Yeah. She had to leave the room. She was yeah. crying so hard. It was making everybody else cry. Well, yeah. she was looking at a mini pig on. <laughs> if you follow Winnie, you get that joke. She was, she was, <laughs> she's into the animals. <laughs> uh, Annie, Annie, um, I'm really glad you're here. You, you know, a few laughs always, always um, helps you people get through mm -hmm. life, and that's what this show is Gotta about. Enjoy it. And we prepare touchy subjects. Touchy, touchy subjects. subjects. <laughs> is what we call it. The um, Michael Jackson documentary? We can talk about that. <laughs> touchy, tushy. Very touchy. Touchy, subject. tushy. Touchy, that's a very I touchy subject. <laughs> um, I didn't see it, but Variety called it the feel-bad movie of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't watch it because I... I only have like so much time to masturbate and I just was like, these can't... Like I literally start. I'm not even kidding. I started to put it on and I was like... This is bad. Like, what if I? No. <laughs> what if I find out I'm a squirter? <laughs> I definitely watched it last. Uh, watched it last night, and uh, yeah, no, uh, ruined all sex options for the <laughs> evening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very yeah, do it post coital. <laughs> it's very sad. It's very graphic. It's very awkward. And uh, does this mean we don't get to listen to MJ anymore? Is that what is that what society's new rule is? Well, I saw a lot that the of mayor people... of New York, Mayor De Blasio, got a lot of flack for swaying his arms to R. Kelly's "I Believe I Can Fly" at a black church event, and he said afterwards, he's like, "I don't know who fucking sang that song. He didn't know, you know. <laughs> it's like he's just what is he supposed to do, you know? If the church is playing it, and apparently some of the people in the church." Uh, sat down and would not engage the song and others <laughs> didn't care or know. Wait, were they singing? Was the co like choir singing it? Was it like I believe so, yeah. <laughs> really? That's so funny for an entire choir yeah. to be like, now's the time. <laughs> We've been working on the shit. We've been working on this for the past six months. God damn it. Yeah, I think that's what we happens. We just finished our last rehearsal and then I'm like, <laughs> fuck. And if we're going to apply these rules to, to, to the people that are getting um, uncovered now as 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 evil. What about you know James Brown and Chuck Berry who yeah. peed on people and and, yeah. and 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 James Brown who hit people and I still listen to my Hitler albums. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they hold up. I don't Those care what anyone thinks. Those you can masturbate to. Yeah. Those you can masturbate to. Nice, Kevin. Nice. <laughs> so it's going to be tough letting go of the music, but I think uh, I, I have to admit I don't really hear 
Michael Jackson anymore without thinking about the worst things ever. Little boys' buttholes are not the worst thing. <laughs> In the right context. What is? What's worse? Um, than a little boy's butthole? I mean, I don't want to out myself here. But <laughs> a little girl's butthole, okay? I'm not gay. I'm not a lesbian. <laughs> yeah, the, it's so graphic uh, for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. It's uh, it's basically the first two hours is just like the different sexual positions. No. Even. Like, it is like, and it's so yeah. That's so graphic. Bad. Like, it That's is, so bad. there is no other stuff other than the different ways he fucked those two kids. There's really nothing else in the doc. You know, I don't that. know if I'm going to watch. It's like there's been so much like outing of these things happening that it's like, yo, mm -hmm. I have my own molestations to get through. Like, I, it's like I get it. It's not like we need to bring awareness to molestation. I'm like, I know it happens firsthand, guys. I've molested. But people so many never people. talked about it when I was a kid, and now it's and now it's and I want it's you, a su it's a yeah. big subject. It's but, a touchy subject, yeah. but it's a big subject. It's just. We've been talking about Michael Jackson fucking kids since 1993. Yeah. You know, and so it's, if, there, if you've been talking about anything for decades, like there's definitely a level of truth to the whole thing. It was like his 10th nose job when we started talking about yeah. this. God. I just no, feel nobody like... does a better Michael Jackson impression now than Kyle Dunnigan. Have you heard that yet? Oh my God. It's unbelievable. You got to hear this. It's on his yes. Instagram. Uh, it, it got kicked off Twitter, but. Uh, no, it's the opposite. The opposite. It's on Twitter. Yeah. It got oh, I see. Yeah. And it's Kyle hard. To, it was hard to find. Ever. And 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 I told Kyle this last night at Brody's memorial. Uh, <laughs> Marilyn Manson sent it to me. Oh my God, <laughs> Kyle's. So it's making crazy. the round of of demonic dungeons. And uh, <laughs> shout out to Kyle Dunnigan. Here's a clip of his Michael Jackson impression. <laughs> I'd like to address this horrible HBO documentary about me. It's filled with lies and ignorance. I would never hurt children. I love sleeping with little boys. That's all. Just a grown man sleeping with a little boy. Of course I fuck them kids. Come on. It's so obvious. I was a good pedophile too, huh? I built a whole amusement park and a candy store. And I say, you kids like candy? And they'd be like, yeah, yeah, we like it. I'm like, yeah, you like it? Yeah, okay. Yeah, well, tell your mom to get the fuck out of here. Tee -hee -hee. Then they did. I was like, oh, shit. Didn't y'all notice I only slept with little cute boys? Not little girls. Not little ugly boys. Just cute little motherfucking tight-ass mm -mm boys. Well, better get back to heaven. I got in because I apologized right before I died. Damn the rules. Bye. Nice one. All right. There have been a lot of people have been um, taking action against Michael Jackson, though. They've uh, Impersonations. The, the Lakers are uh, no more Michael Jackson songs. They used to play Beat It all the time. That's and they wow. replaced Beat It with um, Fuck Amer it. American yeah. Girl. <laughs> with Eat with It, Tom, Little Boy's Buttholes. They replaced all, to all, uh, all Michael Jackson with Tom Petty and Chuck Berry. And now everyone's mad because Chuck, Chuck Berry, Berry, yeah, he got caught peeing on a fourteen-year-old yep. girl and like driving her across state lines to have sex with her and stuff back in the day. Ugh. And so now Chuck Berry's out, you know. So it's gonna it's be a lot, Tom. Tom Petty, you better hang in there, buddy. Yeah. Oh, man, I think I hope he doesn't up. die anytime soon. Yeah, I think okay. he never had a problem getting laid. So I think Tom we're Petty? okay with Tom Petty. And now I heard rumors that Celine Dion. We can't listen to her music because she let uh, her dog lick her asshole once. <laughs> <laughs> well, she, her Take husband, it. her late husband was her manager and had known her since she was like right. nine or something. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is fucking, there's something about that. Like when uh, Asia or Genta or whatever, when yeah. her thing came out where she had like hooked up with that kid. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone's like, but he was a boy. He was 17. I'm like, yeah, but she played his mom when he was seven. That's like weird. Yeah. That's like creepy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know. You might be friends with her. I feel like you know too many famous people. Hey, Jars, no. Can we go back to the Celine thing yeah. for a second? Is yeah. that a true story? And how did she do it? Is it peanut butter? <laughs> what? I was just kidding. Wait, around. did she oh. like her dog's <laughs> asshole? Like, or yeah. she so welcome, into that. I was like, wow. Welcome That's how to, she hit the high notes. Welcome to comedy, Kev. <laughs> Listen, she, has a, she paid him off. We'll be, we'll be here. I didn't know you were... Um, more of a writer, he's a behind the scenes. What's guy. the word uh, when you when you're not in a class but you're watching a class? You're auditing the yeah, comedy exactly. class. <laughs> What's next, Ed? Well, while staying on topic, let's go to the Catholic Diocese of Brooklyn. Once an apology from Pete Davidson after we what? compared R. Kelly to the Catholic Church in a joke on Weekend Update. <laughs> I saw this. Pete was hilarious. What was the joke? 
Um, the joke was, this guy's a monster and he should be in jail forever. But if you support the Catholic Church, isn't that like the same thing as being an R. Kelly fan? I don't really see the difference. Only like one's music is significantly better. <laughs> Pretty good joke. Yeah, that's, that's a great good. joke. Yeah. But at the same time, the Catholic Church... Way worse. Yeah. In, the, in <laughs> the 2001, in 2001, I made a joke at the Shack Emmett Smith roast, saying, uh, "I said R. Kelly wanted to be here, but he was R. arrested, yeah. which he was back then." And, and I said, uh, "If he had just worn a priest collar, he wouldn't have these troubles today." <laughs> so, so pretty much, Pete stole your joke, and fuck you, Pete. We need an apology. I right think now. Steve. I think Pete updated it and made it better. Pete probably and, wasn't even alive. But. And and I and I don't. I wonder. I wonder if. Uh, Oh, he was alive. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, I wonder if... Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. I wonder if um, he'll apologize. I don't think no, he will. You can't no, apologize no. for this. Bill Burr had the best... He had the best response as he was on some morning show, and they asked him... They said, don't you think it's a little... He had some Catholic church joke. He goes, don't you think it's a little insensitive to make jokes about the Catholic church? And he goes, don't you think it's a little insensitive of the Catholic church... To allow people to molest kids, like you're mad yeah. at me for making the yeah. joke. No, it's. I mean, they they're yeah. notorious. It's, Get out it, of here. We're more upset about the jokes than the act than the it's action ridiculous. they're about. It's yeah. such a it's such a deflect, you know. Like when I was a kid, my bishop was a child molester. Two weeks after I was confirmed, he came out and uh, quit being a bishop and said he was a child molester. Is confirmed when they it. take that little piece of Jesus and they shove it up your ass? No, that's oh. communion. Confirm oh, okay. is just Close. like you know when they. Find another they way go, to get money we'll out of you. We won't molest you. We won't molest. It's like getting a check mark, a yeah. blue check mark on Twitter. <laughs> I'm surprised. Was, I'm surprised. Sorry, I'm uh, just going to say I'm surprised that the Catholic Church isn't looking to get Pete Davidson just moved to another comedy show. <laughs> 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 Shuffle him around. Yeah. Why isn't Mad TV still around? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I mean, funny. the last Pope had to quit because of allegations like this. Yeah. He didn't do it, but he got caught covering it up and he quit. You know, right. yeah, it's, and he was also a Nazi, the last pope. It's so he was crazy. Hitler's bishop. Is that true? Yeah, Pope Benedict was a. It's like an Indiana Jones story. Like the pope was a fuck. Like the our pope last, that's still alive. That's not the pope. That guy. Yeah, Benedict. A new Hitler. Yeah, he was the Nazi youth. Nazi youth. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> like, but come on, back then the Jews were so annoying. You know. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> mm. Are you religious? I was brought up Quaker. Is that true? Really? Yeah, I was proud wow. of Quaker. Wow. Oh man. So what is that the that's not the one that shakes a bunch. Those are no, shakers. No, but they were but but shakers are, you know, they were pacifists too, and then Quakers are like the gods in the form of an inner light that's in everyone and everything. <laughs> Fair enough. Pretty wow. sweet, right? And w- so the, pacifist. The, did that affect like your that. comedy? Did you come from a Quaker did you have Quaker jokes? Did I come from a Quaker priest? No. Was there a sense of humor in the Quaker religion? Yeah, you know, I honestly think that's why I got into comedy because the church is you sit in silence and then if you feel moved to speak, you can stand up and speak. So I would fucking talked every time. Like it was crazy. Like they're like Annie. So I would just be like waiting for my turn, like boop, 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 boop. And then I would stand my brother said that I would stand because I have a twin brother, so he was with me through all this. He said that I would stand up and say things that would like move people so much and he knew I was full of shit. Like I'd stand up in like third grade and I'd be like I just keep thinking of the starving kids in Africa. Like, I don't fucking know anything about Africa. <laughs> and he's like, the teachers would be like wiping tears. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. I've been Annie Letterman. <laughs> but I do feel like it's like, but I also feel like it helped me learn to bomb, you know, because whenever mm-hmm. I'm like just sitting in silence after a joke, I'm like, oh, I feel closer to God now. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm in a fucking Quaker meeting. But I went back after the election. I was a little triggered. Um... And uh, I went back and I was like uh, in meeting and I cursed and I was like, this feels powerful. I want to come back and try wow. some like, <clears throat> black jokes or something, some dick jokes, <laughs> do some racist jokes in this bitch because they have to accept you. It's the Quaker way. <laughs> Did you see Trump wow. signing Bibles down in Alabama this week? Is that what he was doing? Yeah. With, a, with like a stamp. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, this Funny. is too hard. Yeah, he was doing uh, tornado relief, and people were bringing him his Bibles, and he was autographing their Bibles. On really? the cover. Yeah. The cover, not inside. Yeah, Trump is On hilarious. I'm, I'm, I hope I don't get in too much trouble at this point, but I just think he's so, so funny. He, it's, it's, the balls. The balls. To sign a Bible. I don't think he has any clue. He, has he no signed clue. boobs and Bibles. <laughs> he really is. I mean, 
One of he my grabs top, him by the Bible, you know? He's probably one of my top five favorite comedians of all time. He's really <laughs> nervous. Well, you know him from doing roasts and stuff, right? Uh-huh. Oh, my God. Was he funny? He's always been funny. He seems he's even so funnier funny. when he's, like, private. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a ball buster. He's ridiculous, right? Yeah. Maybe he's losing his sense of humor. I don't know, but... He used to be really funny. And then that tweet he had yesterday or, or whatever recently about how he didn't call, he, he purposely called Tim Cook Tim Apple yeah. to save words and time. <laughs> <laughs> I like um, <laughs> He just doesn't give a shit. As much it's as like, you can hate him. He's like asking his buddies, what's the most ridiculous answer I could have for this? <laughs> and and everyone's like admit. falling for it. They're right. like all getting so, but when he, when uh, the Elizabeth Warren thing came out that she was only like, or was she, percent yeah, the Native tiniest American. percent. And when he goes, well, I guess I can't call her Pocahontas anymore. I'm like, that's genuinely the funniest. <laughs> <laughs> like, you can hate him forever, okay? Mm. The wall, all that stuff. But it's like, come on. That's a fucking Pocahontas joke was <laughs> timely. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> yeah, he is, he is uh, often hilarious. But yet, does not go to the... Uh, to the Al Smith dinner or the, uh, the 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 gridiron dinner or the the White House yeah. correspondence right. roast anymore. Mm-hmm. Well, he didn't want a Michelle Wolf's skin uh, hair to match his skin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, as uh, Bill Cosby showed us, you don't need to be a, a good person to be hilarious. I guess so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, the. Um... And what's your excuse? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It's not even a joke. What's uh, next? What are we doing? Um, Give me well, something juicy. Come on. All right. NASA head says the first person on Mars is likely to be a woman. Oh. Jesus, they're going to get lost. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> it's the next planet. You can't get lost. She's going to get her fucking... you see a bucket. bunch of asteroids, you've gone too far. Turn around. She's going to get her period all over that red planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Women just need their space sometimes. <laughs> NASA stands for Need Another Sassy Astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Why did they did they say why? Um, it's just uh, the actually it looks like the most qualified person. Oh, it's not that people tweeted and were like, "There's not enough women on this uh, astronaut no. lineup." No, they actually <laughs> no, they just think they that, tweeted yeah. Mars needs women. Yeah, yeah. no, it's just <laughs> there's a whole movie are, about it. It's very dirty in Mars. They need to clean it up. You know? <laughs> They're sending Dust a Mexican it. woman to clean it. <laughs> it's uh, it's actually being put on by NASA. <laughs> How's a spaceship going to get to Mars if it has to stop every 20 minutes to stop and pee? It's going to take forever. Women will most likely make it there first because, unlike guys, they're not afraid to ask directions. <laughs> NASA's going to have its first all-female spacewalk at the end of the month, really? whatever that is. It's a catwalk with oh, these girls. Okay. These women. Yeah. They're gonna, it's a modeling competition. It's going to be the hottest woman gets to go to Mars. <laughs> does, does, does NASA even, even handle this stuff, or does it SpaceX? Work for NASA. NASA contracts SpaceX on stuff. Sounds so hot when and you say yeah. it's like space Space tri- yeah. triple X. <laughs> Ooh, you guys, I'm getting so horny. I'm getting so wet for space. Space NC-17. <laughs> Do you think she's going to finger Mars herself show. on Mars? What's that? Do you think the lady's going to finger herself on Mars, like christen it? I feel like you have to. Don't you think the guys I just drop a little seed? Mars. Yeah, of course you would. Yeah. Drop a little seed? Imagine the first uh, transmission. Houston, Houston, we have, we have a problem. <laughs> Does this spacesuit make me look fat? <laughs> All right, well, I think we've done it. I thought we were going to do the spaceship. jizz joke about where it's like, we have a problem. I didn't realize the semen was going to float and smack me in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming. No, you have to stay there for another week. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, right. I forgot my diva cup. How cool is this? I would love to see a woman in Mars. That'd be wild. Yeah, I think it's cool, big man. Big titties in space. But you know, uh, as far I watched the Challenger explode, so we all know what yeah. happened last time we put a woman up there. That's why they're sending a woman were, first. <laughs> <laughs> were you watching it with your class? Yeah, because I grew up around there. Yeah, and I was. I was. I think I was four, and we were all you brought. Remember it? it? Yeah, it was one of my first. I, they told us it was fireworks. Yeah, oh. it was preschool, and they brought us outside to watch the uh, to watch it, and it blew up, and the teachers were all crying and shit. They're like, we are moved by fireworks. We yeah. we saw it in Naples, and uh, yeah. I think I was in seventh grade or whatever grade it was. And you saw uh, it all the way from Naples. Yes, That's so to, far. We used to go and watch, you know, because you it's just so bright and so you know mm-hmm. so big. Um, and uh, as it was going on, I asked if I can you know go out and see it, and sure enough, you know, we saw the two the cloud with the separation and all that. It was nuts. Yeah. Really sad. Wow. <laughs> 
It's a wonder. That's a heavy thing to see as a kid. I mean, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. What it was. So traumatizing. I, I had no idea what it was. I was so young. I didn't. I didn't something about you, such figured, like a, you must have known something to see your teachers crying. I mean, you could explain it to a four-year-old as much as you want. And look but. at Ed. He's made some <laughs> teachers cry on his own. <laughs> Now it's just a great story for me, to be honest with you. It's not to sound horribly yeah. insensitive, insensitive, but, uh, you know. Yeah, it sucks it happened. I was more shaken up about the one in uh, 2003. I was with dry- Tom Hanks? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't remember any of these. <laughs> was there a monkey or something? No, there was another spaceship that blew so up. You're thinking of the Michael Jackson documentary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bubbles. I was told that was fireworks. Shout out to Jackson. Bubbles, who will be at the Brea Improv March 29th. He's Sharing all, some stories, he's hopefully. opening for me. The Brody joke is so funny now that I'm realizing what you said. What? When he, you first plugged these and you were like, oh, yeah. I'm doing his, that's so funny. Because I'm, I'm doing local dates. I did laugh. Brea, La Jolla, they're all like Brody's territory. The 818. Oh, California. Bubbles well, is still alive. He is? Yeah, he's in a monkey sanctuary in Florida. Good for him. Yeah. Wow. Good for him. I heard he got a hand job from the same place Robert Kraft got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do one more touchy subject. One more touchy subject. This one's breaking, so I don't really know much about it. But uh, Felicity Huffman, arrested by the FBI, Ooh. agents with guns drawn. Laughlin to surrender on Sunday. Apparently these women... Uh, paid a lot of money to get their kids in the college. They bri- they bribed <laughs> they they're rich people who bribed their children's way in the college. Uh, it seems pretty normal to I like me. The yeah. SWAT team coming in Nothing so funny. To see here. Yeah, I love that they had their guns drawn. Do you think it's people that are mad at the Me Too movement? They're like, all right, ladies, you're gonna get treated like <clears throat> everyone else. Then you're probably no, right. No, it's because they cheated because they're entitled. I mean, this is assuming they really did it, which. If they're surrendering to the authorities, it's apparently so guns she probably knew. has something to do with the surrender. Yeah. <laughs> she you know. knew it was coming. Um, the indictment claims Huffman made a charitable contribution of fifteen thousand dollars to participate in a college entrance exam uh, cheating scheme on behalf of her eldest daughter. It just doesn't seem like enough money. Yeah, the girl got a fourteen twenty score on her uh, PSAT, uh, approximately uh, four hundred points higher than her last try. Oh my god! Oh wait, hmm. so they for they, she tried they sucked tried. at her SATs and then like and then bribed her way to get her better SAT scores. Like, why wouldn't you just like pay a tutor? I mean, because the girl's not going to learn. That's why. And first of all, those tutors don't work. When I got my tutor, I got a worse score. I'm gonna be thinking of different. Well, ways you can't to- read, Ed. Okay, that's not <laughs> their wow. fault. So these are just parents looking out for their kids. Their kids are not going to get into the best school. I don't think it so is them looking out for their kids because if their kids aren't smart and then they're making their kids go into this like high pressure school, it's for them to mm-hmm. tell people that their kids went to a good school. Interesting. Yeah. It's not like why would you want your kid to like be under all this pressure at a school they can't like send them to the state school and let them deal with it. Lori Laughlin wasn't arrested today because she's out of town. Good for her. She was shooting in Vancouver. She landed today. She's turning herself into. Authorities tomorrow. She'll be arrested tomorrow. Um, it's kind of hot. I've always wanted to see Aunt Becky in handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> She's so hot. Lori's so Pretty. nice. This is sad. I think it's going to be okay. I don't think this is going to be that big. What does it say about the future of Fuller House? It's going to be uh, the big house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's going to be a little more... Is... Less Fuller? <laughs> She's married to William yeah. H. Macy. Why is he not in trouble? I guess he, he... didn't sign the paper. Oh well, good yeah. for him. I imagine Felicity them. Is, yeah. I imagine them pulling him out like that scene in Fargo where they're arresting him at, <laughs> <laughs> at <Drunk> the hotel. <laughs> so what's the what's the what's the thick skin lesson here? Is to uh, you know cheat to win. No, it's like cheaters never win. Well, it's well, I mean cheaters used to win all the time. That's why people cheat. It's just like the pre- like just when you have so many things and you just want more things. That's what it yeah. is. It's like you need to have another like accolade. Like you need the accolade of having your kids go to like an Ivy League right. school. Who gives a shit? College at this point we've realized is nothing, right? I mean, my college went out of business twice and then burned to the ground. So oh, really? I'm a little bitter. Really? But um, wow, yeah, college is Santa Fe. Look it up. I mean, it's I mean, college is a scam unless you're going to be a lawyer or a doctor, you know. But you go to college and you learn social. You know, whatever. Nah, bullshit. I got a decent education. I didn't know it at the time, but in hindsight, you look back and go, 
I'm smarter than the other idiot who didn't go to a college. I wasn't ready. I'm like ready right now to do high school, I feel like. Like yeah. I could crush <laughs> high school right now. I'm like, I like learning. I could You're do young some, enough like, now basic that, math. Andy, like, if you went to college now, that would be hot. People would go, Wow. She wants to be you know, and then you could you, you could write a one man you could write a one person show about like whatever, astronomy or you whatever. Call me a man, I'm flattered. Hey man. I have big dick energy. <laughs> it's your it's your it's your um, mustache? No. I was going to wax it before I came, but I didn't have time. The fact that your lipstick matches the um, front of the microphone color cover is it's amazing. Impressive. <laughs> yeah, I planned it. How creepy was that? Annie's got be? big gold hoop earrings, her biker jacket on, a Brody t-shirt, orange lipstick, and she's go ready to rock tonight. Where's your gig? I'm at the comedy store in the main room with a bunch of MMA fighters. Oh, really? That'll nice. be fun. Yeah, it's Sam Tripoli's show. What kind of crowds do you like? What are your favorite crowds? The laughing ones. Do you ever play, like, uh, you go on the road, you like those crowds? I like, yeah, I kind of like all crowds. I like all of them. I like all of them. I like every time I've ever performed. Sometimes I, like, will have a great, like, month where every show is awesome. And then I eat a dick so hard, and I'm so hurt, and I can't sleep. And I'm like, oh, my God, I get it funnier. What's going on? And then I wake up in the morning, I'm like, I have the best fucking job in the world. How amazing and insane is it that you can go one day you're killing with the same and then another day you bu- it's like the most fun like I call it an ocean job like I do this because I was like thrown in the sea and it's like you're either like being pulled under or you're on top of a fucking wave I don't want anything to do with the land <laughs> I don't want to I want a sea job baby right it's so fun you gotta learn to swim how long have you been doing stand up 10 years that's you're, you're gonna first hit your sweet spot as funny as you are Ten years in is when, and the older I'm you get, very you're still right young. Now. But when you start to get to your forties and fifties, yeah. you're, you're going to start getting those mom roles, and you're going to be so funny. I mean, like, I literally just texted my old commercial agent. I was like, "Am I still rep by you guys? Because I don't want to miss out on the sweet mom look I got going now." Like, Let's <laughs> no, do you're this. far from that. Still, you're still playing like the dirtbag best friend, probably. But <laughs> thank you so much. I don't think people understand how much that is what I want to be to called. Today, I was helping my friend paint this mural at Van Leeuwen Ice Cream, mm. and um, and we took a picture of it because my I was wearing like a bodysuit that's like a thong, and my thong was like up completely up my back, like just such white trash. And then I must have been Instagrammed by so many strangers. <laughs> I mean, completely like whale's tail, like almost to my shoulders. Really? And I realized later that my asshole did hurt. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that did kind of hurt. I had like a huge wedgie for a long time. So you're going to do the show with MMA fighters tonight? They'll yeah, be in the audience and they're performing too and stuff? Well, it's going to be, I mean, they do comedy. They've all been doing comedy. It's Eddie Bravo, Brandon Schaub. Um, and then Bert and Joe Rogan. And it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. Do you know your opening joke yet? It depends on what jacket I end up wearing. I don't want to brag, but I'm a little bit of a prop comic these days. Really? <laughs> About yeah. the wardrobe? Yeah, every once in a while I got a little Interesting. A little cheat. I like that. But I've been talking about how I've been living in my car, so. Oh, yeah. Is that deal. true? Out of my car. Is that well, true? I just, you know, I went through a breakup, so I'm kind of like moving around. You're moving around. And But I think I found a spot. Nice. It's really good. But I'm not living in my car, but I'm leaving, living out of it. What's the address? Of my car? <laughs> well, the Toyota dealership, I got to return it to. I'm like, oh my God, I got to return my home. <laughs> That's the thing my home about, has quite a few dents in it. <laughs> so you were living with someone and now you're on your own and, and, and you had to move out of their place. Well, it was both. I just figured I probably would have an easier time finding a place than him. I see. I just think I'm a little bit better. Is it hard stuff. to go through a breakup when you don't have a, your own bed and stuff? To me, that would make it even harder. I, Although I have checked yeah. into hotels after breakups. So. I don't have money, but uh, that's so cool. We get it, Jeff. You're rich. <laughs> you can afford a fucking hotel. <laughs> like, uh, you know, it's like, no, I'm so leaving. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it wasn't like that. Like, it was just like, you know, it just feels like better to be separate for now. But yeah. but it's not bad. It's a, It's been a good breakup and all good. And I feel really like happy and recharged and good. And you I feel fantastic. like I'm getting my 10-year sweet spot. Mm, yeah. Brody, right before he died, I w- got to go on his podcast and talk to him about how po- I had this like positive flip where I just like, I went to a Papa Roach concert. I told Ed about this. You love the Papa Roach. Papa Roach changed my fucking life. I met them on a heavy metal cruise two years ago <laughs> with Big J Okerson. <laughs> I partied with them. They were the best. Then I stayed in touch with them and they were playing the Roxy. I was like, I want to come see you guys live. They gave me two backstage passes. Nobody would go with me. Nobody understands anything. <laughs> Nobody gets it. Mm-hmm. I went by myself. I cried about Kevin, like next to a mosh pit, not in it because I don't have health insurance. <laughs> and um, and they had two things they said. They came out and they said, 
they went, L.A., we, we came here 20 years ago and all we got were no's. But the work starts at no. And I went like, ooh, hmm. I actually have not gotten that many no's. I have said no to a lot of things. I've had low self-esteem. I've rejected opportunities. So that was like a wake-up call for me. And then they came out and they're like, we love you. And they drew a heart with their fingers. And I was like, I've been so crazy to the audience. I've been projecting like, like you molested me. You broke up with me. You fucked my mom. Like, whatever, <laughs> you know? Like, onto these audience members that just want to have a good time. Right. Like, they're to see me specifically a lot of the times too where I'm like what a psycho so then I've been in my head drawing a heart with my fingers and it's been so good that's great it's just been really nice. fun I mean I'm still mean to people but it's like in a loving way I just way. can't believe Papa Roach they're so <laughs> I love them I'm a, a real fan human. I'm a true fan you have to be I want them to do the um, theme song for my podcast but I'm scared to ask what's I'm your sure. podcast going to be called uh, Me Inspiration I'm going to bully people into living a better life it's going to be a call out show so people are going to send in their stories and their numbers and then we're going to like harass them wow it sounds like the <laughs> it's going to be fun I like it it's kind of like the exact opposite of this show <laughs> like this is like how to take a joke and yeah so maybe maybe people will listen to ours and then yours like yeah. for yin yang yeah for the yin yang effect well, I love watching you even late night at the comedy store. You're like so cash up there. You lay into people um, <laughs> and you're fun. You're like, there's like, I'm not into like, there's like, you call them woke or like buzzkill comics. I used to call them like, you know, they'll talk about uh, the differences between men and women or they'll talk about herpes or they'll talk about breakups. But you're like, nah, you're like, I feel more like he just read my set list. I'm you're like, like, are you sure? Yeah. I feel like you're a more of my flavor of like, of like a party comic, almost like a wing woman for couples. If yeah. there's a couple in the audience, I'll you're going to help them get laid, yeah. not keep them from yeah, getting Yeah, by having together. sex with them. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please don't hit you're on me. You're fun. You're fun. <laughs> you're, you have a I'm sexy fun. act. You know I'm what I mean? Fun. It's not like a, a I'm bummer. I'm fucking fun. They called me Fun Girl Annie in college, and it took me so long to realize it was an insult. I was like, yay! And then I was like, oh, I think they're making fun of me. <laughs> no, I was like, I, I am Fun Girl Annie. <laughs> No, I'm a like I'm a I've always partied and then I quit drinking and drugs and stuff, but I still party. I still have fun. I have right. more fun now. That's great. Now, I try to have now fun you're known as Fungal Annie. Yeah, Fungal <laughs> Annie. They're like, what's going on? You smell weird. <laughs> <laughs> you look like that T.J. Miller commercial with the toe. <laughs> what's up with your toe? It's talking to us. <laughs> your toe's like fucked up. All right, I think we can't hold off the inevitable anymore. <sighs> this is our final and second roast in peace for our pal Brody Stevens. All right, well, we can't put it off any longer. Maybe it's time to say goodbye one more time to a great comedian, our dear friend, Brody Stevens. I miss that guy. I'm really going to miss that guy. This one's hard. I loved him. I didn't even realize how much I loved him until he was gone, maybe. That's not true. I, I knew I loved him. I knew I loved him. He came over here for a party, and I was so happy when he walked in because you didn't see Brody at a lot of just house parties. He, he actually went. brought that up the night before he died. <laughs> I went to this shitty party at Jeff's house. Can't stop and thinking about it. I was so honored that his mom and his sister came to the comedy store to see the memorial. I was so honored that they asked me to speak. Um, so I, I didn't write it out, but I thought it out. And, so good. And I went on after Zach Galifianakis made everybody cry, and then a solid hour of Brody's childhood friends and his Little League coach yeah. and his college roommate. It was wild. And it was gut-wrenchingly sad. It was so... When his one friend said the thing about where he's like, I naively thought my friendship would be like enough to keep him through. Yeah, I know. I really weeped. Oh. Dude, I was like hyperventilating. Yeah, it was really sad. And, and he really had good people around him. He had good friends and, and a family that loved him and his comedy family that loved him and his fans that loved him. And he yeah. did... He did, uh, he did leave us, so um, I made my speech, and, uh, and um, I just wanted to share it with the fans, because it was close to the public, 
It was a private memorial. Yeah, we're so, all so sad. So, um, here it is. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jeff. After hearing all of Brody's childhood friends speak, I'm starting to understand why he killed himself. <laughs> This guy gets it. Yes. I can't believe this is what we're doing tonight. Brody would have hated all this attention. He hated to get his picture taken. How do we lose the sixth best drummer in comedy? <laughs> his hairline was named after his high school, Reseda. Yes, he was a comedian. I was barely a comedian. He was a hanger-on at the alternative comedy scene in New York City. I was doing stand-up. Daniel's here. He was just about to book me on the Letterman show. I was like, thinking I was somebody, finally. And uh, Brody came to all my run-throughs at this little performance space, the surf reality spot. People know that. I did a show about my grandpa called Take a Banana for the Ride. And Brody came to every run through we did. And I didn't know him. And he just distracted the shit out of me. He stood in the back. He was in the front. He was on the side. He always laughed at the wrong times. He was an awful person, just terrible, toxic. Couldn't understand, I couldn't understand what this guy was doing. And why, and I was pouring my heart out about my family and my grandfather in this play. And, and Brody just would fuck me up every single time. And finally I said, HBO's coming to look at this first comedy festival in Aspen. I really want, really want to do it. And, and Brody, you know, I don't even know if I knew his name, honestly. And I said, he would just come over, and I said, please just don't come. <laughs> or just stay in the back somewhere. Like, I can't, I don't know, it's not a, where I can improvise. It's like a rehearsed monologue. I can't, I can't deal with it. You're tripping me up. It's too emotional for me. And there it is, the big night. He's this close to me. <laughs> Six foot three. Wearing shorts in the front row. Lights in my eyes, but I could see Brody just laughing at the setups. Fidgeting around, flailing his arms. Afterwards, I say goodbye to everybody, and funny, I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Brody's standing there, what the fuck? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? I asked you not to come. You sat in the very front row. I was late, it was the only seat left. Had to be here, had to be here. And then for probably another decade, he was the worst person in my life. I'd come out to L.A., I got a job in L.A., and there's Brody walking up to me. Oh, there's Jeff Ross, he hates me. <laughs> Made it worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. I couldn't understand. I realized that comedy was just a receptacle for all these broken people, me included, and you had to deal with them, and over time, Brody and I not just became friends, not where I loved him, I needed him. I got a show on Comedy Central, The Bird. A lot of the people who worked on the show are here tonight representing 
and are still, we were all, and, and, and I needed Brody. I didn't, I had never hosted a show, a primetime show. And, and Brody, Sarah would do the runs through with Brody. Brody, Brody would, would had to be my guy. I knew the crowd was hot and ready if Brody queued him up. It didn't matter if the director needed an extra 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Brody was down for the, the, the mission. He never questioned it. He, he would come sit in the writer's room with us before the show. We would try our jokes out, out, out on him. And he, that positive energy, it wasn't bullshit. Mike Ferrucci, the most negative person in the world, instantly turned around, put a smile on his face, one of our pals, uh, one of the writers on the show. Brody could cheer people up. Brody and I wound up hosting the Oddball Tours three or four summers in a row. We became such good pals, we shared a dressing room. Like, what a full circle relationship. And I imagine a lot of people had that with Brody. And he was a great dressing roommate. He let me smoke weed and I let him stretch. I never saw many comics stretch before a show, but... He was emceeing with his whole body. And I was working that big main stage, and don't think I didn't learn from Brody. Brody was a king around here. He'd make jokes about getting cut out of movies, and I think it's so cool that the cast of, of, of Hangover is here. All the guys came out. This is, all the people from Comedy Central came out. All the shows that Brody worked on. like. It stayed with you. When you worked with Brody, he just stayed with you. You never forgot him. I'll never forget Dick Van Dyke stopping me at some event once and goes, Brody Stevens, he warms up your show. I love that guy. <laughs> Dick fucking Van Dyke on the Brody train. Positive energy. It kind of makes sense. Two people that make you happy when you see him were Brody and fucking Dick Van Dyke. Brody, Brody, Brody was, was a king around here. Around here, he was a king. He walked the halls, people bowed down. All the people who work here are squeezed into this room tonight because I'll never begin to understand what happened to Brody. I'll never begin to understand how we lost him. But I can tell you that, the, the, especially the younger comedians, like. He was an example of how to turn your anxiety and your depression into something that was art, that would help other people. It was the greatest gift he could give. We got tons of it. We got tons of it. And like his mom told me tonight, she said Brody was quite a guy. He really was a one of a kind, quite a guy. Um, I brought a drink. I never do toast really, but uh, to, to Brody Stevens, I loved him so much. And not, and not just to Brody, who this is all about, who we lost, but to the people that are still around that really need us. Think about those people, too. 818, I love you guys. Bye, Brode. 818, till I die. Positive push. Positive push. No positive Good. jump, please, okay? <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Really appreciate it. Love you, Birdie. If you want to talk to us here at the podcast, email us at thickskinwithjeffross at gmail. Right, Ed? That's right. And uh, you, we also got an Instagram, thickskinwithjeffross, and a Twitter, at thickskincast. And you got a bunch of gigs coming up, bud. Tell us about them. 329 and 330 at the Brea Improv. That was half a joke and very true at the same time. I love Brody. Yeah. Um... <laughs> Two shows on the 29th, one on the 30th. You'll also be doing uh, May 10th and 11th at the La Jolla Comedy Store. That'll be fun. La Jolla in May. Who are you going with? You. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come? Yeah. That'll be fun. And um, also, Bumping Mike's coming back. Two dates. There's a lot more dates about to be announced, and oh, I'm going to really? announce it as a tour. But... Bumping Mike's is fucking unbelievable. Hey, it's like a new, awesome. fresh... 
comedy take. It's so good. Thanks. Every single episode was the shit. It was so, so funny. That makes me so happy. My mom was like screeching. Really? Oh my God. Wow. Gilbert Godfrey. My mom was like, I can't handle Gilbert Godfrey. Like oh, falling so off the couch. He was so funny. You guys were great. Saget. And Bob Saget. Incredible. Shout out to Saget, whose new show, Videos After Dark, premiered this <gasps> week. It looks so good. Awesome. Yeah, he does uh, America's Funniest Videos, like adult version. Um, You're also doing Roast Battle at Clusterfest this year? That's going to be so much fun. The whole Roast Battle crew is going to come up to Clusterfest. And All of Clusterfest looks pretty awesome. Yeah. You guys got to check that shit out. So John Mulaney, Pat Oswalt, and Roast so- Battle. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Um, all right. Hit me up on Cameo. I'll make you a video. They're really fun. Hit me up too. I'm cheaper. <laughs> Are you on Cameo? I'm on Cameo, baby. Oh, wow. I did two. You did two? Two Cameos, guys. <laughs> so embarrassing. Do you know how embarrassing it was for me to put out my Cameo? How much do you charge? I charge like $20. It's fun. It come, come on. You guys don't want to... I'll yell at you. It'll be fun. And it was just some kid being like, can you plug my... <laughs> Really? My DJing, you know and then he goes, follow me on Instagram, and then harass me as a 17-year-old kid. Like, come on, follow me. I'm like, I'm going to get arrested. Get out of here. That is dude. odd. That is really now weird. Now you have to talk to these people for the rest of your life. I'm bound to them for that $15 I made. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the podcast, everybody. We love hearing feedback. We love knowing that people are out there getting a few laughs, feeling better, mm-hmm. hanging with us down here in the bunker. Don't say hanging. Right. Oh, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> oh. Brody was my fate. I love him so much. I miss him every day. It's hard to stop talking about. I don't ever want to stop. talking You don't about have him. to. You're not. I'm gonna post pictures to. of him for the rest of my life every day. Yeah. No. That's what people keep saying about Kev. You just never yeah. stop talking about. Him. Yeah. Ever. It's a disservice. Stop talking about. You know. They live on if you keep talking about them. It's. Yeah. I'm sorry, can you it, so. keep playing the guitar? Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> you didn't really know them that well, so shut the fuck up. But, um, just kidding. No, but don't you feel like, Ed, didn't you feel like this? And don't you feel like when people go, I'm so sorry for your loss? It's like, no, 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 I'm sorry for all of our loss. Yeah. For the loss. I started losing it at the comedy store because I saw one of the nights after he died, I kept seeing all these people come in, and I'm like, they're not going to get to see Brody. Yeah. Fuck. But anyway, watch all his stuff. There's so much stuff out there, and it's, it's crazy. all so good. Go get Enjoy It on Amazon. I downloaded it. I paid for it. It was, uh, I watched, I burned through all of it since, uh, since Brody passed, and it's great. It is so good. It is a really, it so is a, funny. it is a depth into the human mind. Yeah. It's his Comedy Central show that he produced with Mike Gibbons and Zach Galifianakis about his manic episode he made it into high art i highly recommend it there were two right the hbo one it was an hbo show that comedy central bought from hbo and made into a bigger show something i've never even heard of ever anything's possible yeah kevin thanks for coming by pal kevin skinny play us out with some blues will you bro play some hitler for us Just the Hitlers. Top ten Hitlers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got the thick skin blues. And I don't know what to do. Brody, I miss you. Life is hard. We're getting through it together. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. Stay alive.